Joining us now, former Deputy National Security Advisor Katie McFarlane, along with former White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Mick, first to you, you actually wrote, by the way, it's great to have you both on. Mick, you wrote two State of the Union addresses and were involved in two more. What are you looking for tonight? Yeah, and I didn't write them. Stephen Miller wrote it. But what we're looking for tonight is uh, they're going to be making last minute changes, Liz. They're actually probably working on the speech right now. These speeches take four, five, six weeks to write. But they'll go through changes, and especially with what's happening in Ukraine, they're rewriting the speech right now. So what we're going to see is Ukraine early. And then after that, when he starts to transition to his domestic policy, what we'll be looking for is where he spends his time, not what comes first or last, but will he spend 30 seconds on a topic or a minute and a half. That's where you really can sort of get an insight into where the, 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 the administration wants to spend its time during the next year. That's what I'll be looking for. After Ukraine, and that's going to be very interesting, is on the domestic policy, where does he spend most of his time, not what comes first or last in the Yeah, speech. we hear you, Mick. Uh, KT, to Mick's point, the president is indicating he'll send uh, half a billion dollars more to U.S. cities to fight crime, hire more cops. We'll talk against defund the police. This is what's also really dragging down his poll numbers. Will Americans really, really believe the president when he says the State of the Union is strong? No. You know, he's lost all credibility, particularly on the inflation issue. And when he says, oh, inflation is going to get so much better because of my policies, no, it's not. It's about to get a whole lot worse, primarily because of his energy policy. Uh, you know, to, to KT's point, it's the energy policy, Mick. Also, by the way, the GOP rebuttal will be delivered by Kim Reynolds, the governor of Iowa. And Mick, Democrats are furious that Rashida Tlaib will also have a response. Uh, you know, but to what KT and what you're saying as well, Mick, the president is facing a brutal plunge in the polls. Let's show what CNN, what Quinnipiac, across the board, you see a real drop, a plunge in his poll numbers. And Mick and KT, it's a constant barrage of misleading topspin from the White House that's really slamming Biden's poll numbers, Mick. Take that on first to you. Yeah, it's going to be hard. When you're writing the speech, it's going to be hard to say, look, all the wonderful things I've done as president, and I solved all these problems, when people know differently back home, when they know things are more expensive. It's going to be hard for him to take credit for doing good and then at the same time look like he understands ordinary people. Donald Trump was really, really good at it. Bill Clinton many years ago was good at it. I'm not sure Biden is going to be very good at it. It's a very difficult message to, believe, to, to deliver when people know they are hurting. When people know they're hurting, right? That's what Mick just said, KT. People out there are feeling the pain, right? And, you know, the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, again is misleading. She equated the president's speech tonight to Obama's speech during the financial crisis and President Bush after 9-11. Obama's speech was not about war, and Bush's joint address was delivered just nine days after 9-11. It's a topspin that's dragging down Biden's poll numbers. Do you agree? Yeah, and, and here's the thing. He's, he's missing an extraordinary opportunity. I mean, yesterday, the German government, led by the most radical environmentalist party, the Green Party, has completely reversed course. So they've said, look, we're going to go back and we're going to revisit nuclear power. We might even go back to coal power. We want to get off the blackmail uh, that the Russian energy puts us in the, that position. So they've already gone there. President Biden now has, if he's worried about his political spin and top cover, he's got great cover. He can just say, you know, we are, we agree with the Germans. We are going to revisit American energy policy. I may have shut this stuff down at the beginning of my administration, but we've now seen in Ukraine what the Russians are willing to do with their windfall profits from high energy prices and with the leverage and blackmail they have over the European countries. So I am going to have a whole new policy here. I'm going to reopen the American energy industry. I'm going to export liquefied natural gas to the Europeans to help them with their national security, and it helps us with our national security. You know, he could reset his entire presidency, Liz, in the first 10 minutes of his speech. And it's an, I think he'll look back at that, and we'll all look back at that as an extraordinary missed opportunity. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear, KT. Uh, by the way, I want to turn to what former President Trump has been saying. You know, we, we know that the former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, has been slamming uh, former President Trump for calling uh, Putin a genius. Uh, the president, Trump, former president, is saying he doesn't support Russia or Putin. He was saying he was referring to Putin's military strategy, which is something different than how the media has been portraying it. Uh, let's watch Trump at CPAC over the weekend. Watch this. We should not be buying Russian energy, but rather allow the people of our country to start producing like they did just one year ago. Under Bush, 
Russia invaded Georgia. Under Obama, Russia took Crimea. Under Biden, Russia invaded Ukraine. I stand as the only president of the 21st century on whose watch Russia did not invade another country. You could take the five worst presidents in American history and put them together, and they would not have done the damage that Joe Biden and his administration has done in just a very short 13 months. Mick, your reaction? Yeah, I think it's the exact right message for him to spend. By the way, it's one of the things that people forget is that Trump didn't start any wars and actually probably prevented many of them from taking place. I think his point about uh, military genius and so forth is being misinterpreted. I think what he's saying is after what uh, Putin saw the world respond, how they re responded to Crimea, how could you blame him for thinking they wouldn't respond um, in an aggressive fashion here? I think that's the, the message he's trying to deliver is that Putin is simply responding to the things that the world has shown him in the past. But I think uh, Donald Trump there is, is spot on, which is that if he were president, I do not think that Russia would be invading Ukraine tonight. You know, and KT, you know, Biden is talking a gas tax holiday, drawdowns from the strategic reserves. That only moved oil prices last fall by about 10 cents. And they come, they dribble out over four or five months. It's not an immediate, immediate impact from the SPR. Uh, but the GOP led by Steve Scalise, KT, is saying, you know, why is the White House, why is the president empowering and enabling Putin's war in Ukraine by exempting from sanctions Russian energy? Your word on that. Final word. Yeah, and Donald Trump, in, in that same speech, I was there at CPAC, and in that same speech, he said that when he met with Putin, he warned him, don't you dare come near Ukraine. In addition to that, Donald Trump told the Germans especially, why should I pay, you know, in NATO, why should we pay for your defense if you're going to become dependent upon Russian oil and natural gas? It's the same issue. It always comes back to American energy policy, and Biden is dead wrong on what he's done. Katie McFarland, Nick Mulvaney, great to have you both on. Come back again soon.